We want to show you how you can transform any game room, man cave, garage floor into the dream floor for your favorite team. Pick the sport, pick the arena, pick the look, you name it. We're going to give you an idea how to mimic a floor like what we've done here. This is our NFL themed man cave floor. This represents one of the worst games for Seahawks fans in history. So real quick, just a moment of silence. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. Malcolm Butler. Okay. Patriots down there, Seahawks here. We mimicked the floor, and we're going to show you how to do the same thing. We got the base coat mixed up, moss green, floors primed black as you can see. We're just putting beads out so it'll be easy to spread. We're just trying to move it, spread it a little bit before we cross roll it so that it makes it a lot easier to roll out. So we're just gonna kind of smooth these out. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty, it's spread pretty evenly, pretty thick, that's what we want. And now I'm going to cross roll it. Saturate the roller. And now what we're going to do is we're really just going to help the roller, or help the epoxy level out. Now I got my roller saturated, and I'm just gonna go back and forth now, and level out the floor. Nice thick coat. Just gonna go back and forth a couple times. See how fast it levels out? if you went over it with the squeegee. So the better, you, the better you do at spreading the squeegee, the epoxy with the squeegee, uh, the faster it will level out. If you look across this floor, it's almost already leveled out. So we're just gonna go over it. You can do this with an 18 inch roller. It'll go even faster.
now we're pretty good. You may want to go back and forth. If you still think it's not leveled out very well, you can cross roll it the other way. If you feel like you need a little more in one area, just push a little bit over there just to help it. Notice I'm not applying any pressure. I'm just allowing the roller to do all the work. The roller is doing everything. I'm not applying any extra pressure unless I want to actually move the epoxy. I'm just rolling it along. moss green base coat down now we're gonna put our bright green highlights in we want this to look like at least somewhat like grass or like a football field so we're just gonna do two different tones of green swirl it together and just give it a cool grass flowing real artistic look so I'm just gonna take bright green and I'm just gonna put it everywhere And you don't want to waste too much in one area. You want to get enough all over the floor and then go back and fill it in. So I'm just tipping, tipping it out every once in a while. I'm just pouring some out from a friend's, if you know what I mean. And then, like our favorite technique, we want to blur and blend a lot of these, uh, these two colors together a lot. We just want to make a cool looking football field. So we're just going to try to blend them together a lot. No rhyme or reason necessarily. We want lots of highs and lows, just a cool looking field. Notice I'm working backwards just in case I slip on my cleats. I can fix it. There you have it, our football field. So we have two layers of tape, and if I pull one, you can notice how it makes a perfect line here. It's pretty much ready to pull. So I'm just gonna pull my tape, and notice that perfect straight line. That's what you want. And this has been, again, exactly two hours. It's been exactly two hours since we did this. And I'm just gonna pull both of my rows of tape together. Okay, getting ready to do the end zones of our miniature football field. So we plan on doing some lighter colors. Not 100% on the colors, I think we're gonna do like silver and white. So we're gonna put down a whiter 
primer. Okay guys, when you're rolling out primer, you'll notice sometimes there'll be some deeper pores like this. So you really want to work the primer into those pores. We want to seal as many of those pores as we can. And then you're going to just roll it out and do one final pass to make it all look nice. That'll help minimize some of the outgassing on the concrete slab, meaning you won't have as many bubbles that pop up especially in warmer conditions. Warmer conditions, hot conditions, you wanna to try to fill as many of those pores as you can. Alright guys, just doing the end zones now of the football field. We could move this around with the squeegee, it's such a small area. We're just going to kind of cross roll it a bunch, level out the epoxy, try not to get it onto the tape very much, and then we will add our highlights into that. So we're doing silver and white. All right, the end zone's poured, the field, the field is poured. Now we have this lip because we taped onto the field a little bit. What I wanna do is I wanna make that lip perfectly flat. Now, it doesn't matter as much right now because we're actually going to put an end zone line there. It's gonna be a white strip of tape, but I don't wanna notice any bend in the tape. I want it to be perfectly flat. So when I sand this, it'll actually sand perfectly flat to the same level and you'll see a perfect line here so right now the end zone actually has quite a big lip quite a big lip so let's sand that We have all of our decals laid out on this NFL floor. And you can see it's a lot of decals. You can get these decals at any, any shop that makes decals for cars, vinyl, vinyl wraps, all of that. That's essentially all these are. So you can see we have the hash lines, we have the field markings, we even have an NFL logo. It's gonna go on the middle of the floor um, once all the hash marks are down. We have our Seahawks side over here. Everything's laid out. Now we just need to measure and start laying down the decals and then we'll float it in a clear epoxy. So yeah, now we just have lots of being careful and pulling the backing off and making sure it's all lined up and we'll film a lot of that so you can see kind of how it's done. 
Some of these decals are so big that we're actually going to split them in sections. So we're taking half of this decal and we've taped it down. We know where we want it. And then he's holding it up and I actually, I actually peeled, I actually peeled the backing off the decal. So now it's sticky, it's the sticky part. And I'm gonna have him hold it up and drop it slowly for me. He knows exactly where it needs to hit. And I'm going to slowly just work my way. Now these are just hash marks. So this is actually a lot easier than most decals. Once you have that down, it's kind of nice to have a roller. We have a rubber roller and we're just gonna flatten them off. And then we can pull this tape and now we can do the other side. So he's keeping it off the ground until I push it down. Once I push it down, then he can drop his side a little bit more. We're slowly just trying to work it onto the floor. So now we're gonna go to the other hash mark there, and we're gonna do these, we're gonna do the edges, and then we'll also show you the, uh, the logos as well. So what this first process looks like is I know that we're trying to line it up with that edge, hold it on that edge. We have a mark over there, and I know I want this lined up here. So this is where we want the decal. He's lined up, I'm lined up, and then we just take some blue painter's tape and we're just going to tape the whole thing down. Oh, it moved a little bit. So, hold on. Got it, Justin? Yeah, pull it tight. Oh. We're good though. See, now this is ready to do the same thing as we did right there. And we're going to do that to all of the really long strips.
So when we're doing the hash decals, they're very easy to do because they're so small and they're separated. But when you do a solid decal that doesn't have a lot of breaks in it, you actually need to go back and forth and work it down onto the floor. So you don't want this decal laying as flat and as parallel to the floor anymore. You want it more upright. And then as you're squeegeeing it out, you want the person then slowly dropping it. And we're, what we're trying to do is minimize bubbles. Okay, so slowly. So what you want is you want it to be here, let go. You don't want a lot of pressure. You want it kind of loose like this. And then it's kind of loosely falling onto the ground. And we do that to minimize bubbles. And this is, this is just a rubber roller. That's all that is. And now we'll do the other side of the decal. And you always want to keep your line pretty straight. You don't want to be like going up like this and trying to like jam it up like that. I'm trying to keep a straight line so that it's, it's falling together. Now, even, even when we pull this backing off, you may get some air bubbles. You can pop those with a razor or a needle and squeegee out the, the, squeegee out the air. I'm not as concerned about that right now. I just wanna make sure everything's lined up and we get a solid bond to the epoxy. Right, when you're pulling these decals up, the top layer up, the transfer paper they call it, you don't want to pull straight up because what you're going to do is create all this force and it's going to start peeling up the decal. You don't want to do that. So you want to peel it back on itself. You at least want to have an angle that's going against almost like sheer, a sheer angle and just peel it off. And then once it's peeled off, you're gonna wanna go back over it with either a squeegee or a roller and just work out any bubbles you can. Again, if you need to, you can use a, a needle to poke the air out, a razor to get the air out, and just make sure everything sticks really, really well before you, you flood coat it. So now we're just gonna continue to take all of these decals off. What we have here is just pinstriping. We got online and we got 3 8 inch pinstriping because it was one of the closest measurements to match our hash marks. So what we're going to do is actually outline the entire field and also use it as an end zone because we want it to, really it's gonna make the floor pop. So we wanna make sure everything's white. And it's just like, it's just like vinyl decals, you pull it off and because pinstriping is nothing more than vinyl. You pull it off and it has transfer paper on the front. So Justin, grab that. 
So you're going to be pulling it. Get down so we know how far I'm going. And you're going over that hash mark and we want it right on the end zone. So you don't want to stick the whole thing down until you know that it's covering this transition between the end zone and the field. And that looks like it's pretty good. So now we'll take this, this last hash and we'll actually cut that off so it looks like a clean line. Getting ready to flood coat all of the decals on the metallic epoxy. It'll bring back all of the dullness that we sanded. It'll bring all of that back. It'll completely level out the decals. Um, when you're walking around on spikes, be careful that you're not walking on top of the decals. You can actually ruin them, scrape them. So you actually, you kind of want to be a little bit careful. Um, I could probably reach this whole floor from the edges. It's just going to make it a lot easier to walk around. So. Let's do it.
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. What floor would you do? What are your favorite teams? Comment below. Who knows? Maybe we'll even make a floor with your favorite teams and your team colors. Make sure you subscribe. We have awesome new projects coming out, even some new products coming out. Make sure you follow us on all of our social sites for any updates. Thanks for watching.